My name is Kara Marie Morris, and I want to welcome you to the Words in Season podcast. You can find more episodes on YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, on the Apple iTunes app. You can also subscribe there so you never miss an episode. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook under Kara Marie Morris. And remember that every time that you tune into this podcast, to the Words in Season podcast, that Jesus has a word in season for you. So today I want to read you a story from the Old Testament and it reveals how God can use whatever you have in your hand and he can multiply it and he can make it more than you can ask, hope, think, dream, or imagine. He just wants you to trust him. He just wants you to hear from his heart that he wants to take care of you, that he wants to bless you, that he has nothing but good in store for you. If he had nothing good, nothing but good in store for his, his people in the Old Testament, it is the same for us as New Testament believers. We are his children. We are the sheep of his pasture. And we can trust him that he's going to take care of us. Let's go to the first scripture I had in my heart was Romans 8.32. In Romans 8.32 it says, He who did not spare his own son, the father did not spare his own son, but he gave him up for us all. How will he not along with him, with Jesus Christ, graciously give us all things. This is not a selfish scripture to believe that God wants to take care of you, that God wants to be your source, that God wants to be your everything. It is not selfish to believe that God cares about your job. He cares about your finances. It's not selfish to believe that God cares about what food you eat. He wants you to eat healthy, nourishing food. It's not selfish to believe that God gave his son Jesus so that you would have a life that's not just here. Not just a life that you're like, oh, well, that's good enough. Or, oh, that's how I grew up. Or, oh, I, I don't want to ask for too much because you know, it, I don't want to seem selfish or I don't want other people to know that, that God has blessed me because, you know, they may think that I'm trying to think better of myself. No, God has provided for a life of abundance, a life of blessing, a life of not just addition, but a life of multiplication, a life of living in a high place with him, not just so that we can have stuff for the sake of having stuff. Recently, I, I moved and I, I moved into a storage unit and I have a storage unit full of stuff. And I realized, what am I doing with that stuff? If it doesn't have a purpose, if it doesn't have a place, why am I keeping it? And, and thank God someone in my life who is wiser and older and has more experience than me said, Kara, I think you're paying for more for that storage than the actual worth of the stuff in that storage. And when God, when you need it, God will provide it. You have to trust him that God will provide it. Does it mean that stuff is bad? Automatically, I can hear people saying, well, this is my stuff and I earned it. Absolutely. But when you release it into God's hand and say, nothing that I have have I gotten for myself. Nothing that I have is from myself. But it's all yours, God. Whatever you would have me to do with it whatever you would have me to distribute it, then that is a place of freedom, knowing that you, this is tools, these are tools. Stuff is tools, money is tools, talent and ability is tools, and it doesn't have you, but you have it. You work it for the kingdom, it doesn't make you work for it. This junk doesn't make you work for it, amen? So that's what I wanna to talk to you about, is about the multiplication and the blessing of God. The scripture that I want to read, it's a story in the Old Testament, 1 Kings. I just love the Old Testament. There's so much richness and there's so many things that we can learn. Of course, we love the whole Bible, but I think I'm an uh, Old Testament junkie right now because this is still so new to me because for years, as a born-again Christian, I got saved when I was like five, but I never really took the time until about three to five years ago and said, it was like a more of a discipline, but I disciplined myself and I was like, okay, I'm gonna read the Old Testament. And at first it was like weird and super boring. But then as I begin to read it, I begin to see the Father's heart calling us in every story, in every chapter, in every verse, he's calling me, he's calling you. You see this plan of redemption that is so vast 
and so wide that for eternity we will be learning about what this plan is, who Jesus is, who the Father is. So the scripture is 1 Kings 17. And this is a story about the prophet Elijah and how the Lord provided for him. So Elijah was in trouble and he had to run and he had nothing, but he had to trust in what the Lord had for him that he was going to be taken care of. So the Lord led him to a cave and there um, birds came and fed him and he was supernaturally provided for. And then it said the ravens brought him the bread and the meat. This is 1 Kings 17 verse 6. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. And sometime later, the brook dried up. You know, sometimes that happens. When you start looking to the brook, when you start looking to the birds, when you start looking to that job, sometimes it dries up because God is wanting you to go to a higher level and trust him. So there had been no rain in the land and the word of the Lord came to him, go to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. For I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath and he came to the town gate and a widow was there gathering sticks and he called to her, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? And she was going to get it and he called and he said, and bring me please a piece, a piece of bread. And she said, as surely as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. And I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and make and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go home and do as you've said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me. Now the world would say that's selfish. He's being selfish and self-centered. How dare you ask a widow to make you food first over her and her son? How dare you ask for that? But there is a blessing in honoring God's word. She was honoring the prophet. She was honoring God's word. There's a blessing in honoring his word and honoring what he has asked you to do. He said, but first, make a small loaf of bread for me. From what you have, bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. And she could have said, nah, I'm never coming back. This guy's weird. We're just going to eat. And that's where her supply would have stopped. Whenever we do things for the Lord and we do it out of convenience or we do it because we have the extra time or we do there's a there's a low level of blessing because God is good but whenever we take that next step and whenever we give a sacrificial seed whenever we do things when it's not convenient when it's not easy that's when the blessing of the Lord increases and we can see a blessing of the Lord because it is an example to us and to our to God where our heart is it's saying these things don't have precedence over you. My time, my desires, what I want, because I wanna serve you even when it's hard. I wanna serve you even when it's not convenient. I wanna serve you when no one else sees what I'm doing and no one else cares. I wanna do those things. And there's a huge blessing in that. So in verse 14, it says, for this is what the Lord God of Israel says, the jar of oil will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. And the jar of oil was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill and he grew worse and worse until he finally stopped breathing. And she said to Elijah, what have you done against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah said, and he carried him and took him in his arms and took him to the upper room. And then he cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, have you brought a tragedy even on this widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. And Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room to the house, and he gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. So how did she receive this blessing? She received the blessing of being able to live, being able to have food, being able to have her son received back to life. 
because she honored and obeyed the Lord. She just used what she had and she took God at his word. So there is a low level of blessing when it's easy or convenient. She could have said, well, I'll come back later when I have more. And the Lord would have blessed her. But because she fed the prophet first, there was a, a blessing that was a high blessing. She honored him by even allowing him to stay at her house. And honor and willingness to obey God brought life into her home. When you honor and obey the word of the Lord, whether it's scriptures that you see in your word or something that the Lord has spoken to your heart personally about what you're supposed to do, it brings life. It brings life to your heart. It brings life to your situation. It's inviting him in when you honor and obey him, honor and obeying your pastor, honor and obeying the leaders in your life. It brings the life of God. It brings the Zoe. It brings salvation to your home, to your family, to your body. When you honor what the Lord has told you, he will surely multiply that blessing. So there's a joy in doing it 100% and without reservation, there's a joy and a blessing in it. Honor and a willingness to obey God brought life to this woman's house. So he's asking us today, do you trust me? Do you trust me with what you have? What I keep in my hand, there's an end to it. When I try to control things, when I try to make something to happen, when I try to make a plan and it doesn't work out, there's an end to man's plan. But when I give it to him, he multiplies it. In Genesis 22, 17, it says he, the Lord was saying to Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. There's a supernatural multiplication of blessing in honoring what he has told you. Maybe it's just a scripture. Maybe it's a scripture that the Lord has placed in your heart. You know, sometimes I'm sitting in church and there's one thing that the pastor says and it sticks with me the whole week. And when I honor that thing, when I honor what the, the word has spoken to me through my pastor or through the Bible or through my daily devotional, he multiplies it by bringing it back, by bringing it back to me, by bringing it back to me constantly through the week. And it's that word that renews my mind and therefore it changes my life. It said, in, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply. God is a God of more than enough. Not just in finances, but in wisdom, in peace, in joy, in strength. He is an abundant God. He has an answer for your question today. If you honor his word, he will answer you with that word that you are looking for. So this widow, how did she receive her blessing from God? She used what she had. She honored the prophet. She honored the word of the Lord and she obeyed. Had she just decided, nah, this sounds like a weird plan. I'm gonna just keep this, I'm gonna keep this for myself. Or if we have any leftovers, then we'll bring it to him. But be, then she wouldn't have received the prophet into her home. She wouldn't have received her son back to life. But she was able to receive these things and she was ready to receive these things because she honored the word of God. So I just want to go back quickly to 1 Kings verse 13 again. It says, do not be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make me a small loaf of bread for me. So the widow woman, she was in a hard place. She was going to make her last meal for her and for her son, for her family. And then she believed that she was gonna die, but God made a way for her. And first she had to obey. He said, that Elijah said to her, do not be afraid, go home and do as you have said, but first make me a small loaf of bread for me. The prophet said, do it for me. God is saying to you, do it for me. Serve for me, sow for me. And he is always going to prove faithful. He's saying, prove me, try me, test me. Huh. I know for me, a lot of times I want to control the situation. I want to make something to happen. I want to see God move, but only in the way that I want to see God move or only in this way where it's comfortable and convenient. 
But God is saying, trust me, try me, prove me, make that loaf of bread for me first. Give that offering first. Give that sacrificial seed first and trust me, try me, prove me and see if I won't multiply it. See if I won't bring life, salvation, peace, wisdom, answers to your life today. He's saying, give me your best. Give me your first. And he's saying, in blessings, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. So that is the word in season this week. He's saying, first, put me first. And there will be a blessing as you honor me, as you obey me, as you place me first. In blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. Thank you for tuning in to the Words in Season podcast. Remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you.